He looks as though butter wouldn't melt in his mouth, Sanderson, but when he wins a match, he has been known to let out some blood-curdling cheers and maybe even the odd expletive, which isn't exactly appropriate. We were at the World Championship last year, and thankfully, we'd just gone off air. He was involved in one of the last matches out there on an outside table. I was packing my stuff away, and all of a sudden came this massive noise. And it was Elliot having won a match. I'm not going to say what he said, because I'll probably get the sack. But it was, I must be honest, quite funny to me, but not exactly what you should be doing. Let's just say he was given a, a telling off by Emily Fraser, the boss of Matrim Multisport. Quite rightly so as well. Anyway, that's why he's known as the Shouter. Yeah, look at this kick shot. Purposely playing the two ball in the corner. It was lined up as a combo. Oh, he needs this one ball to keep going. Needs it to keep travelling. Yeah, and it has done. It's actually a good safety shot. He's got Elliot in a little bit of trouble here. You can obviously see a portion of this one ball, but where it's sat, if you can only hit the bottom side of it, well, need the scratches on. This is it's concerning, Elliot. Oh dear. Yeah, I presume he went for the pot there at first. I didn't think the one ball would go. Reached the last 32 of the World Championship last year, Elliot Sanderson. A player to keep an eye on. He's very dedicated and very determined. Yeah, a few years ago when uh, I was on the tour, he was known as the type of player where if you could just stay with him or you would take a lead, his head would fall off and he had real bad concentration levels at the table. But now he's taking it a lot more serious. A few years have passed by. He's kind of developing in, into a good player. It's going to be interesting to see how Jason and Elliot get on at the World Cup of Pool next month. Yes, if you're thinking of coming along and buying a ticket for that week, it really is one of the most special weeks in pool when so many teams turn up trying to win the ultimate 
national team title. And Elliot Sanderson will be involved for the first time. Another first. He's taken the opening rack against David Sobiak. Now on table 24, we've been talking about possible upsets. How about this one? Miguel Silva from Portugal finds himself on the hill. 8-4 up. In fact, he's just won 9-4 against US Moscone Cup star Tyler Steyer. The man from Wisconsin is on the one lost side of the draw already. Radislav Babica from Poland. He's 6-1 upon Rich Jones. Robbie Capito from Hong Kong, China, and Robin Cripps from right here in the in the UK. They're seven racks each. I can tell you Chris Reinhold, who missed the ball that turned the, the Moscone Cup last year. He's 6-4 upon Georgie Georgiev from Bulgaria. Looks like Elliot's eyeing this ball up into the side. Two ball goes past the purple five. So this is all about put everything into the pot here. Don't worry about the cue ball. Just play it at the, the natural pace. Pupil's a little close to the rail, so he can't do much with this one. I mean, he could jack up, but that makes the pot really difficult. Mm, he's jacking down, so that tells you feels he's no choice. And it makes the shot harder. That's the problem. Cued across it, the cue ball that is, and after such a bad shot, what a good result for Sabi actually that is, what a good result, didn't deserve this. <coughs> By the way, keeping my promise to tell you what's occurring on table three. Jason Shaw, 7-3 up on Ali, Hershey. Carrage, actually table two it is. Looks like there's a billiard on here. He can just play off the edge of the blue two and try and pop the purple five in the corner. If he does play that, he needs to play this slow to stay on the two. Where's the nine ball going? Where's the nine ball going? Well, he didn't play that one. But the nine ball vanishes for a quick rack. It's 1-1. One, one. And it just goes to show what can happen. You can trace that back to missing the two ball, getting the fluked hook, and then, how about that? Other scores for you. Abdullah Al Yusuf, surprise semi-finalist in the World Championship last month. Well, he's 3-2 up in his first match here. Pia Filler, the wife of Joshua Filler, she's going quite nicely. She's leading Marco Vignola from Italy, 4-3.
Abdullah Al Yusuf, by the way, is playing the Republic, the Republic of Ireland's Ryan O'Neill. Robin Cripps, 8 7 up on Robbie Capito from Hong Kong, China. Nasty shot, playing this one ball into the side. He's got to try and get the cue ball, well, a little bit closer to the three. And when it's this close, he's double hit this. Yeah, we've got roaming referees um, at this year's UK Championship, so because it's one of them type of shots where the double hit is possible. They just wait for the referee to come over. Yeah, that's fine. That's a legal shot. Yeah, the referee in question who is roaming around, doing a fine job as usual, is Germany's Marcel Eckhart. This is a little thin one. Oh, job well done indeed. Cue ball's a little close to rail. He's going to play a stop shot. Doesn't need to get silly with the cue ball here. Just make sure you put the four. Yeah, that's fine. this cue ball to slow down well he does have a shot here would have liked to have been a little bit straighter Ball's going to roll behind the nine here. It's a big, big mistake. They're the chances. You just feel you've got to take. Hitting the seven's not going to be a problem. Nine ball could go close as well. Things could be moving. Well, I'd be delighted with where they've finished. Yes, as he was when he missed the two in rack two. So Sobiek enjoying the best of the run in the early stages. Oh, what a good pot that was, though. Had to be so fine from distance. And look at the cue ball. Not quite on a sixpence, but that was excellent call. Yeah, beautiful pot there from Elliot. Needs another good one here. Just kill the cue ball. Well, if you weren't impressed with the way he finished that rack off, you should be. It was a really good pot, a really good positional shot. The eight was no bargain, but he played it nicely, dropped on the nine, and that's why Elliot Sanderson, the shouter, has got something to shout about, although he's keeping quiet. He's two on up. Young player from Denmark, Mickey Krauss, He's 4-3 up 
on Saulius. Vi to Kaitis. How about that? 4-3, as I said. Rich Saunders on the hill against James Walsh. 8-6. Chris Reinhold, the US Moscone Cup player. Now 7-4 up on Georgi Georgiev. And Abdullah Al Yusuf, who went deep at the, the Whirlpool Masters as well recently. Should have won against Loho Sum. Didn't. Blew it by missing a five ball. He's 4 to up on Ryan O'Neill. By the way, I think there's every chance that the, the winner of this match might find themselves on a streaming table again because the winner goes forward to play on the winner's side, Martin Gould. The snooker star we've already seen. Didn't want to contact the six there, did he? That's just stopped the cue ball. That round of applause you might have heard in the background, that's because Jason Shaw, well, he's won that match over on table two. He won 9-3, so he advances to round two. He needs this two ball to keep rolling. Elliot might be tempted with a jump shot here. Well, that one went badly incorrect. Badly. Now, look at this table. Sobby Edge from here really should dish up. It's important he tries and draws the cue ball back on the left side of the eight ball here. Well, surely he's not hooked himself, has he? Well, in terms of the pod, definitely, maybe even fully. There's only one word for that, Carl, unforgivable. Needs to make sure he hits a rail after contact as well. Which he does, but he's relying on a little bit of luck. Could have been worse. But to surrender position from a shot where you had ball in hand, something you simply can't do. And it wasn't as though Carly was playing into a tiny gap. There was a, a large margin of error there. A good pop from Elliot. This is another thin one, though, isn't it? He'll go, he'll go for this one, though. He'll chop it down the rail. to play this with a bit of spin so he doesn't hit the five ball oh this has worked out nice this that's okay
because Sanderson is Jason Shaw's World Cup partner. I'm sure Shaw will be keeping a, an eye on his new right-hand man. An eagle eye. I think they'll make a, a pretty good dynamic pairing, don't you? Yeah, it's going to be an interesting event for these two, both left-handers. Good potters. And while it's a case of been there, done that for Jason Shaw many times over, for Elliot Sanderson, representing Great Britain, playing alongside one of the game's colossal figures, it will be arguably the, the biggest week of his pool career. A lengthy run here would be the perfect send-off to the World Cup of Pool. And... Elliot Sanderson is going the right way to getting off to a winning start at the very least. He leads David Sobiek now by three racks to one. Very good American player Shane Walford has just started out on table seven against Geese van Westenbrugge from Holland, one each. Abdullah Al Yusuf, the gentleman from Kuwait we've been mentioning, he now leads Ryan O'Neill 5-2. Luke Rollison from Great Britain, he leads his fellow countryman Robert Jarvis 7-1. Robbie Capito and Robin Cripps have gone hill-hill, eight each. Arfan Dad leads Vetus Evangelos 5-4. Nine ball was moving off the break, but he has lost the cue ball again. Not quite getting that break how he wants it. He's trying to keep the cue ball in the centre of the table. He's got second best prize there, though. Is he going rail first? Oh, he is going rail first. Needs the cue balls keep rolling. Well, at least he can see a piece of the two. Good shot. Close to the left side, but it's not gone in. And Elliot, well, he's going to be delighted with this lead. You can see this two ball. He'll know, he'll smell blood. He knows his opponent is struggling out there. He possesses a really 
repeating compact Q action. Does Elliot Sanderson. And now teething problems over after unluckily losing the second rack. He seems to be in total command to me. 4 1 up. By the way, we were just talking about Jason Shaw a, a few moments ago coming through his initial examination. Well, Jason Shaw in the second round will play Stephen Follen, who beat Craig Brown 9 6. Stephen is playing under the Canadian flag. He's a, a Brit who now lives in Vancouver. In fact, he's lived there for many years. I was talking with Stephen at the, the US Open last year. He's one of these ultra enthusiasts about the game of pool and to take on Jason Shaw for him that will be a treat yeah I think he's got a club out there in Canada as well I believe he has indeed Carl yeah what a what a great place to go to as well the west coast of Canada British Columbia it is one of the most beautiful places you will ever visit And being four and ahead is pretty beautiful also. But Sanderson not satisfied. He wants to, to push on, make this as stress-free as possible. Been a good first day, Carl. We've seen some really good pool. And I think the venue is a, an absolute star, don't you? Yeah, I really do. Obviously, there's a lot of pool tables there, 24. You can get around this arena and get a good view of, well, any single table you want. actual main arena well that's not new yet that's going to be Saturday and Sunday for the final 16 breaking news Robbie Capito from Hong Kong China he has won just edged through 9-8 against Robin Cripps So in this 128 match opening round, pretty much all of the matches are either complete or in play. Yeah, Elliot's just looking at going off this right-hand side long rail, trying to kick and stick the cue ball where the one is. And just get some distance, just get that one ball back up table. Just hit it a little bit too much on the left side of the one. Surely he's not left the gap. Things just not quite happening at the moment.
Well, that needed the touch of a surgeon. Now has the cue ball. Just poked its head around the three. Can Soviak get through to the one? Clearly, the, the time he's taking, it must be tight. Overcut that, so maybe, maybe he was trying to force the issue and it was wishful thinking. The brown seven and the, the eight ball where things could go a little bit funky. If this keeps going, he might be able to break him out. Oh, he's played this well. He's played it very well indeed. You can just see he's lining up just to scrape off the top side of the eight ball. That just nudges the seven out of the way. But he has lost the cue ball. He was trying to play for the purple five up the long rail. And to the uninitiated, this can be quite deceptive. The fact that the five is so close to the middle pocket. Don't get the impression that this is an easy pot. Anything but. That's why he didn't think it was feasible. The way the middle pockets are cut, that kind of shot is almost... almost want to forget about. Well, he could see enough of the ball to pot it, couldn't he? So that was deceiving. Well, the purple five definitely goes into the bottom right corner. Good shot. The way things are going here, Carl, I'm sure you'll agree. There's only one winner. Yeah, I fully agree. This is a case of just doing nothing silly for Elliot and just try and suss the tables out a bit. Now use it to your advantage. Try and get a real good feel of what's going on out there. Needed the, the side there to bite a little and bring the cue ball more to the right as we're looking at it to make sure he could see the seven. But I think there is a channel through anyway. Yeah, there you could see the cue ball bounce off and leave Elliot. Nice shot on this eight ball. The way he stayed down told us he wasn't sure about it. In the end, boy, it wiped its feet. The nine didn't, though, and Elliot Sanderson continues his march towards round two. He leads David Sobiek 5-1. It's much earlier in the match over on table two right now. 
Skylar Woodward is making his entrance into the tournament. And he leads 2-0 against Adam Collins. Yeah, Marcel Eckert, well, he's in charge of both of these stream tables. So you can just see on the right of your screen, he's racking the balls up. So as soon as he's finished, he'll be back over to table one to rack these balls up. Yeah, that's the ultimate nightmare, isn't it, for the player who has to wait. Also, for the referee who has to scurry across from one table to the next. Simultaneous racking of the balls. He's hoping, of course, the referee to make life easier for everyone, that the, the racks finish at a different time. These two did not. In fact, he's just asking the two players, when I'm over there, could you get the balls out for me to expedite the process? While he's doing this, I can tell you, Kyle Akalu from South Africa on table 21 leads Tim Crooks 8-2, so Kyle on the hill. So to Arfan Dad, who leads Vitas Evangelos from Greece, 8-4. You know, there's a possibility, Kyle, this would be mouth-watering indeed, that Pia Filler could meet her husband, Joshua Filler, later in the... The tournament, well, Pierre Filler is 6-4 up at the moment on Marco Vignola. Yeah, it's going to happen one day, that you would think, wouldn't you? You keep showing up at the same tournaments. Surely you're due to play each other. That would be quite some sight indeed. One ball into the side. A shot on the two. This could well be a break and run out. Yeah, this isn't a, a matchup, but in the Snooker World Cup, not so long ago, a few years back, Norway were represented by Kurt Mafflin and his wife, Anita, husband and wife team. But a husband and wife doing battle in an individual tournament of this of this status. Now that would be a story, wouldn't it? Doing a good job here is Elliot. After a few shots when you're involved in a match, you can kind of suss out your opponent's level. So I'm sure Elliot's relaxed. He knows he's going to get opportunities in this one. It's going to get tougher though after he wins this one. Because if he does come through this match, well, he's going to be playing snooker player Martin Gold in round two. Yeah, I think based on the way that Sanderson's played though and his extensive knowledge of nine ball and the way that Martin Gould broke off which wasn't the best you would have to make Sanderson favorite he's certainly favorite here a red hot favorite because he leads by six racks to one Abdullah Al Yusuf on the hill against Ryan O'Neill 8-2 the Q80 is in front Mickey Kraus now getting ahead of Salius Vitukaitis, 7-4 there. Arf and Dad has beaten Vitas Evangelos, 9-4. Kyle Akalu, 9-2 over Tim Crooks. And I can tell you Adam Collins has won his first rack against Skylar Woodward over on table two.
didn't like it from the minute he struck the cue ball. You could tell, couldn't you? He was sort of leaning forward. He knew he'd not hit that how he wanted to. But you're six one up, buddy. It's okay for now. Now, can Sabac win this rack? Can he run a rack? Considering he's got to pull off an almighty comeback, I'll ask you, Cole, what was your greatest comeback? When, where, and against who? Mm, good question. I think there's two that springs to mind. I think when I played Lai Hao Tao in the semi finals of the US Open, I was 9 1 down and 1 11 9. Now that's the one I was thinking about. What's the second one? I think the second one's got to be against Ralph at the Masters. I think I was 7 2 down. Yeah, 7 2 in a race to 8, and just the way Ralph plays the game and how focused he is. That was a nice one to stick in him. Ralph being Ralph Suke, who rarely misses a ball like that. But David Sobiech is missing plenty. At that pace, down the rail, that wasn't a difficult shot, and he missed it by a mile. A little bit of shoulder in that shot, even though he's perfectly OK. Maybe that's why he's come up a fraction short, but this nine ball will not pose a problem. Indeed, it does not. And the one-sided nature of this match continues. Elliot Sanderson is now leading by seven racks to one. Two more needed for a pain-free passage into the second round. Now he's involved in the World Cup, Carl. He's in a different league, isn't he? He's in amongst the big boys. Yeah, he's going to relish that moment. One of the best tournaments in the world, the nine ball. Very unique Scotch doubles event. Rotate the shots. You can never really settle in that event. It's high pressure, but he's going to love it. Yeah, that's at the Brentwood Centre in mid-June. And obviously, Sanderson and Shaw are going to be one of the favourites to capture the title. It'll be nostalgic for me to go back to the Brentwood Centre. I was first there working in 1989 at the World Match Play Snooker. That's a delightful break. He's potted three balls. Two ball passes the seven. His next ball is the purple five, which is down the bottom end of the table, so he's OK, but he could do with... Well, he might actually run through here because if he stuns off the side rail and back out, it's very difficult to get on the green six. So he might play this with top. Yeah, and then he's got choice of pockets. Needs this to bounce, so and it looks OK. That looks more than OK. <coughs> Another roll or two, it would have been ideal. Could have got closer to the green six. Now he's going to have to just roll through and leave a thinner six ball. Or can he power it through? Well, that's what he tried. Look at the cube ball. There you see it spinning. It's 
This is always a nice shot. Just float over high of the right hand side pocket. Plenty of right hand spin. Soft hands, that just floats over and misses the scratch. Well, I've been impressed, I must say. He's not played lights out, but he certainly played nicely. And now Elliot Sanderson finds himself on the hill. He has a commanding lead at 8-1. Different story, though, on our other streamed table, which you can watch on the Matrim Pool YouTube channel. Table two, and it's all the twos. Skylar Woodward was 2-0 up on Adam Collins. Now, though, it is 2-2. Can tell you, Abdullah Al Yusuf has beaten Ryan O'Neill 9-2. He must have been very disappointed, Cole, with the way he exited the the Whirlpool Masters. Had so many chances.